Getting golf lessons is the absolute best money that you can spend on your game if you want to actually improve. Golf Tech is a golf instruction company based all over North America and they even have locations across Asia. After being recommended to go and see a coach there by some friends, I gave them a call and booked a lesson with Terry Drever. He's been teaching here for almost 10 years and has even more experience coaching than that. We started off with some questions about my game and the goals that I had. How committed are you to improving your game? Want a quick fix or long-term solution? Six. Uh, five. Okay, what we're gonna do is look at your, some of your shots. So we have distance is a problem. And my drives are topping out at 250 yards. How far do you hit a seven iron? Uh, 160. Oh, that's lots. You want to know what the what the average for driver is for under six? Two, four, four five. five. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it is. In 2020. That's the tour. That is the average for an under six handicap. You only want to get to nine. Terry is the ideal coach that I was looking for, mainly because he was tough on me the entire time. 270 yard drive make a huge difference on course, I think. 270 straight drive. It's only gonna make a difference if you can hit the second shot. So it's the second shot that counts, it's not the first one. How many putts do you average in a round? Uh, pretty good right now. I'd say 36 or less. The tour average is 29, so there's seven shots. I've analyzed it and most of my problems are having a random one off the tee or these random shanks that are suddenly happening. Let's hit some and see what we're doing. So what club do you have there? So this is my log wedge. Do you want a half shot or a full shot? No, I had a full shot first. That was it. That is the exact problem shot. You've got a huge issue of going over the top, right? Yeah, because it's kind of Your first move is here. Now if I'm seeing that with a wedge, what's going to happen with a five iron and a driver? Oh, exactly the same, okay? So we're going to analyze the swing, but I want you to hit another one. Yeah, I'm just going to get a stick here. Club should be on this line. And it's out here. It was time to get to work and try to get my swing on plane. Swing it inside that. There we go. Club comes back this way because straight back is on the line you're standing on. You have been trying to take it back that away. My entire life I've been battling like a flat swing. This position is awesome. That's good. Yeah. And now the downswing, you're still outside. You're better. You're inside the line better and you're into a good impact position. Straight back's right there. That's straight back. So at this point, the club should be parallel to the line I'm standing on. You started to go out there. Yeah. So when I'm going into the backswing, I am trying to create a turn yeah. for depth and pass. Now we're in a good position to be able to swing the club. This club, when it comes down, should be dropping through your bicep, your forearm. So we're just looking at what you're doing here. So you're going back swing. Now he extends out to the target and so do you, but you were swinging into yourself a minute ago. Okay, grab me, a, grab me that thing. We move on to the six iron to assess why I'm not hitting the ideal distances with these longer irons. So you have tons of club head speed, you should have no shortage of distance. So your club path on that one was 5.4 degrees from the inside, a positive number. Your face angle was 5.7 degrees closed at impact. So the face angle should be half of the path. With my club face being so close to impact, this would explain why I've been pulling the large majority of my shots. I'm swinging from here, from in to out, and going, am I not going to the target? Because the target's down this line over here. Yeah. Golf's a set of train tracks. I'm standing on this one, and I gotta get back and swing from the inside and connect to the other one, don't I? Well, how's that gonna connect? It's definitely not. So in trying to fix my pull by forcing this out to in swing path before striking the ball, I was actually making things a whole lot worse. And this can lead to a whole number of outcomes, as Terry explains. Yeah. So you started trying to go here and out. Well, you're all, first of all, you're throwing that at it. So then you'll compensate which way. So once you throw it once that way and hosel it, then you're gonna go more to the outside and you're gonna close the face and you're gonna pull it directly that way with your half shot. So the first part is, in this game, you gotta on the address and understand where the backswing downswing are. So go ahead and hit me another one and then we'll dissect this. Good. Tons of speed. Again, top, you're in good position there. Your great position there. There's a little bit of collapse with the lower body here and a little bit of weight outside the back foot. Downswing, you're pretty good on path here. 
coming to the inside, but we'll go through this. So we'll break it down, we'll use this swing. But right here, we're looking at you and we're looking at Ricky. Just sort of what we were talking about in the swing. You started to get disconnected in the back swing because you were trying to think that you needed to get higher yeah. in the swing. So you got disconnected where you thought straight back was instead of where straight back is. Mm. And then you started going back over the top. Nine positions, so we got P1 is a dress, P2 halfway back, P3 where we should be hinged, and P4 the top, okay? So your dress position is good and the ball position should always be three inches inside the left heel with all of your clubs except driver. This just blew my mind. This is the tour okay. average. What? Uh, anyone else picking up their jaw from the floor? Let me know in the comments below. They move their back foot. They don't move the ball. You're affecting low point and there's only that much golf ball on the ground. And you're a great position here. If I draw this really? line up. No, oh, yeah. not. See, if, no. if I was being critical of myself, I'd say that my butt is too far behind my feet. No, should be. If you draw a line from, say, the ball of the foot up to the armpit, the elbow should hang against the line or be in front of it, knees behind. You're in good shape. And the takeaway, so the line is there and you're exactly the same. Now, the only thing I would watch here is your club face is a little bit closed in relation to your spine. This is still a great position. P3 is hinge. Through the forearm, you're good. You're right on plane. You just have the face closed a little bit. Excellent club face is still a little bit closed. It should match your hand better, but you're actually in really good positions going back to there by closing the face a bit because of what you're doing. And the face is closed when you're hitting the ball predominantly. Mm. Finally, I actually have someone I can ask about wrist hinge, which has always been a bit of a mystery to me since starting up again. They're hinging faster than you are. You're trying to keep the face down to the ground. They're hinging it into a square position. Terry flies past this and points out the problem with my weight distribution, which results in a huge revelation. We get to the top, near good position there. But we get to the top and we're just gonna isolate his knee. Oh, okay. And he's braced against the inside of his foot and you're on the outside of your foot, which can affect low point or contact. Meaning your contact with the ball because you're affecting the low point. You're getting outside the foot, so you're gonna wanna get scoopy with it at the bottom. Ah, that's the scoop. Being able to compare my swing to a professional swing like this was so useful. He's got a little bit better lag position than you do. They're not trying to manipulate the club head yet. Your motion's good here with your body. It sounds like I'm in a good place to start rebuilding my swing. So, where do I start? Your upper body is rotating a little quick and so are your hips. So you're trying from the top to rotate your hips. Yeah. No. When things go wrong, I feel my hips slide too much as well. No, they are supposed to slide, they're not supposed to turn. Oh, okay, maybe that's what I'm feeling. So that's... you're when you do that, because you kind of start from the top, you're wanting to turn your hips, you start to push the club outside. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So when I get into the backswing, I'm gonna keep my chest back so I can push down into it. As I make this turn, as I push into it, my hips will turn. The tour average hip turn at impact is 36 degrees. You're trying to spin in there, which can also throw the path out. His hips turn, so you can see here, his chest is much more back than yours is. You're getting out or over the top, his chest is still back more and pushing down. Yours is going out. His club is still staying down in the slot. Yours is getting outside the slot. And that's because you're trying to spin your hips too fast, which is gonna to lead to a slice and a pull. And go everywhere, yeah. yeah. And there it is, the first thing that I need to improve. It almost felt like I'd seen a therapist here. Getting the answers to why I've been having these bad shots all the time actually felt quite relieving. This first lesson was more of an assessment of my game, and Terry wanted to know more about my short game. The moment he asked me this question, I immediately knew how the conversation was going to go. Chipping and pitching, what do you chip with, first of all? Nothing more than my 50, so lob wedge 54 and my 50. I'm pretty confident landing near the hole. How much money you got in your pocket? Uh, you want to gamble <laughs> with me? Would I, would I gamble on it? Yeah. Uh, in, what, in what situation? Who's going to get closest to the hole and I get to pick the spots. I'll pick the I spots mean, and we'll see who gets closest to the hole. I mean, I'm just going to assume gonna that you're far better I'm going to use an eight, iron, use an eight iron, a pitching wedge, and a sand oh, wedge. Yeah. I would recommend a playing lesson at some point for you yeah. so that you understand how to get around the course. 
Unfortunately, the weather wasn't really playing ball before the season closed out. But of course, I'm going to film that playing lesson. It's going to be hilarious and Terry is going to school me on a whole load of things. So make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss that video that's going to happen in the spring. With the assessment over, he moves on to the action plan. Get up there. If you have a good golf swing, you don't understand the golf swing. Okay, so in the backswing, all the backswing is doing is creating coil, okay? Yeah. Well, I want to maintain that coil. So in the downswing, if this is pushing down into the ball, I'm going to compress it better. And what I want to do is keep my shoulders in place and allow my hips to shift towards the target so that I can compress the ball better. So we go back. My sensation, when you start doing this, which we see a little bit of in your swing, my sensation is this. You see the lag position? Yep. This is you. We keep the shoulders and chest back. We're pushing to impact. Up you go. You're What's not like? going to hit a ball. You're going to stand right there and use that black knot. We're going to go back this way. Now move your hips to there. Good. And let the club drop back to here. Perfect. Now do it and square it up. Good. Watch. So we're going back swing. Now you're right on plane. The face is matching your spine. So once you get here, just let the club drop back down. There you go. Now I'll do it with you. Okay, so go to the top of the back swing. 90 degrees of shoulder. Uh. Now we're just going to move the hand down and you're square. You've built in this twist and turn, so it is just going to drop down and down pop. Feel it, okay? Let's try it again. The hands should move down. Down. Yeah, that's called why it's called downswing. So you see how the shaft is dropping through your bicep there? And you see how it goes through your forearm there? And you see how it goes perfectly back on <laughs> plane there? And you are in an immaculate position of impact. So what we're trying to do is take your what out of play. Okay. Manipulation and twist. Yeah. Okay, so you started to try to manipulate the club head and twist the body when we really don't need to. So let's try to hit one, but you can hit it full, but sort of just try to keep control. Your biggest issue right now is in order to create lag, how do I create that? Well, in order to create lag in the swing, I have to keep my chest up. Yeah. Or my back to the target. Mm -hmm. Once I start to spin, I've lost that. Yeah. Okay, so I lose my power. So I'm going back, I'm coming down, club comes into square. I release it to finish. So ball speed is created by striking it and releasing it. In that one you had 83 miles an hour club head speed, but you only had 98 miles an hour ball speed. This is major flaw number two that Terry has uncovered. The ball speed I'm able to produce. The relationship between club head speed and how fast the ball heads off towards the target, quantified as smash factor. These numbers here gave me a smash factor of 1.18. Which is simply saying that you created 18% more ball speed than club speed. So then we're going to create ball speed how? By hitting it harder, right? No. Right. And Terry of course schools me in the most brutal way. So I had <laughs> 90 ball <laughs> speed. But 39% faster. Now your club head speed was at 83 miles an hour. So you were 18 miles an hour faster than me. We're gonna make a turn. We're gonna stay there. As I let this come down, my hips shift naturally to the target. And then I release it. And in just that small amount of coaching, I've added 10 miles an hour to the ball speed from this club. Whoa! So you still only have a 126 smash factor. Now the average is 137 to 138 with that club on tour. So they have 12% more speed, which is going to make you go further. But you got the ball speed up to 109 from 90, and yeah. your club head speed went up, but you didn't try to make it go up. I just try another one. Nine. This is what you do trying to hit it harder. Go to back swing. Now bring the club down slowly. Go to back swing. Bring the club down in there. In that? Yep. Oh, okay. So go to back swing. Let's stay with our ball. So set up to that black line. Set up right there. And I'm going to get this club near the plane line and keep it inside that on the down swing. Good. Now go to finish. Do it again. Back swing. Good. 
When you go back, you're great. You see where your hands are going back between your shoelaces and your toe? And you're right on plane. Well, in the downswing, they need to return back down there. In order to do that, you got to keep the shoulder and the chest back. Now the club's coming oh, through yeah. the bicep forearm. It stays inside that grip. It's on plane. And now it's swinging to the target. Nice work. And in just 30 minutes of me being here, Terry has not only improved my ball speed, but he's also shown me how I can actually hit the ball towards where I'm aiming. This truly is the best money you can spend in golf. But it's not that easy, and these things don't just fix themselves. What's Paul's big problem here? Big problem is he's too quick going from the top to the bottom, and he won't. he's trying to hit it hard from the top to the bottom of the swing. I still have this thin push thing, and I couldn't figure out why it was happening, given that I was getting the other instructions okay. But of course, I'm not going to turn into Tiger Woods in a day. Come to downswing slowly. What should that club do now? Okay. Show me what it should do by the time it gets to here. That's what it should do, eh? Is that square? Uh, uh, yeah, okay, that's not square. So as it comes down to impact, my forearms rotate and that's square. So if I go from this position and the club's square, yeah. then that would be square, wouldn't it? Yeah. If you were going to throw it, wouldn't you do that? Yeah, okay. okay. So as the club comes down to impact, it compresses the ball and it rotates. As I come down into the ball and then rotate out, there's a square position, but that's not. You're trying to hit it so hard and hang on to it instead of let it go. The low point is there, so how about we get the ball and the dime? A lot of people watching this have likely seen this drill, but with me struggling to understand where my low point should be, it's exactly what I should be doing. Good. And it works straight away. So how hard did you swing? Like that. Whoa! 1.3. So again, think when you go to the back swing, keep your chest back. You're in great position. Down swing, good. Now you're dropping it more on plane. Now at impact, we added in a piece for low point because you get focused on hitting the ball and manipulating it. So we got into the ball, we kept the hands moving out and low with rotation of the forearms to get the club back into a square position. Nice move. That was the best golf swing of the day. That was by far. There have been a bunch of comments on my other videos about how fast I was swinging the club, and I agreed with all of them. Now that I've slowed it down, the results are even more surprising than you might think. Increase club head speed without trying. Instead of trying to hit it hard, release made it go further. So the swoosh then would be on that side. All of your golf clubs swing the same way. So the grab driver will hit one with that. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, ball position, left heel. Now you're reaching for it too far. Now move closer to the ball. With my feet? Yep. There we go. As we go into backswing, nice. Little bit too much sway off the ball. Good impact position. Yeah. And a better release and hinge position to finish because you're not trying to hit it and lift it. I had a concern about my right foot lifting off the ground at impact. Yeah. That's fine. Really? Yeah, you've moved into the left side. There's no weight by there anyway. So there's two drills in here that you need to listen to. Golf Tech has an app and web portal that means you can go back and watch your lessons. Included in that virtual area are drill videos that you can use to improve your practice. The two Terry gave me were about using my left hip to start the downswing, and the other will help me keep my back to the target and not twist my hips too soon. Terry finished off the lesson by reiterating the points about my hip turn and made some notes ready for my next visit. Oh my god. I mean, it's a big pole. That's okay, but, but you got, let's see what the path did. So the path was from the inside, but the face was too close, so it just needed to release and extend more to the right. But you hit it in the center of the face. If you saw my video about how far I hit my clubs, you'll remember I had a 92 mile an hour club head speed with my driver. Release to the right. Oh my life. In just one lesson, that number is now 100 miles an hour. I don't even care that it's gone that. So that was close to the club base, wasn't it? Look at your ball speed. 1.42! So, yeah. So if I can create ball speed, I can create distance. Most people are trying to create 
faster and faster club head speed but still don't get any compression so they never get anything out of it. I booked in six lessons and a playing lesson with Terry and the price was pretty reasonable. This of course isn't a sponsored video in any way. He gave such a great service that I'm more than happy to sing his praises. Then I felt compelled to do something you should never do after a lesson, which was go out and play some real golf. I did, however, have the expectation that nothing but bad things were about to happen. However, I got a little surprised. The first drive was still a little bit drop kicky, but you can see that I was swaying a bit. On the fairway was where I had the ultimate brain melter. Oh my god. I just hit it straight out of the middle of the club face. It went straight down the middle of the fairway. We finished out that hole and played the second with an awesome tee shot and a so-so approach to the green. The real magic comes on the third though, as I hit a solid tee shot, leaving myself a sand wedge into the green. And I hit this thing completely stiff to the pin. Chris couldn't believe it. Oh, dude, that was pretty good. That what was... happened differently that time? I didn't shank it. That's what happened differently. Very easy swing. Are you noticing this? It feels a lot easier. I missed the birdie putt, but overall, I was pretty pleased. If you'd like to see more about how I progress getting back to that nine handicap, then hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And leave a like if you enjoyed Terry telling me how it is. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the course.